Well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, looking forward to presenting my paper to you guys. Um, France in the mid 16th century experienced uh, severe violence and instability as the French world's religion progressed. As Protestantism began to spread across the kingdom, Huguenot settlements took hold across various open spaces in France. As these Huguenot communities gathered power and influence, especially from the first religious war from 1562 to 1563, the increasing Protestant population began demanding reform and change in terms of the religious freedoms. At the conclusion of the first religious war, the French monarchy organized a royal tour of France, which lasted from 1564 to 1565. Uh, in entering over 80 cities and towns, the monarchy wanted to promote, promote the Edict of Amboise, the peace treaty that ended the first religious war. When comparing the route of the royal tour of Protestant areas after the first religious war, the majority of these areas happened to be on the fringes of the kingdom. The events that encompassed the first religious civil war brought widespread destruction and animosity across most of France. Even though the Catholic monarchy sought to promote religious toleration whilst on the royal tour, the monarchy also learned to assert their own authority as well. In the presence of what can be perceived as a lack of royal control, city councils began elevating their own position within the open spaces. The civic leaders of various open spaces in both the center and the periphery of France used the royal entrances to brand themselves in a certain way to the monarchy. Given the geographic position and historical connections to the monarchy, um, Angoulême pr proved to be the perfect place for image building to be showcased. But with Angoulême largely forgotten by the monarchy, as can be evidenced by the lack of a thorough description by Abel Joan, who recorded the only source that covers the entirety of the royal tour, the presence of Charles IX allowed the civic leaders to brand themselves as being loyal to the Catholic monarchy, despite the presence of influential Protestants in the civic leadership. If this branding attempt proved successful, then the civic leaders could re-establish Angoulême as being an influential space in France. Thus, Angoulême sought to construct a royal connection to Charles IX so that the city could be seen as being in the center of France, instead of it being treated, treated as a city on the forgotten periphery. The paper that circulated prior to the conference has already made mention of the sites that might have helped the civic leaders of constructing a historical, religious, loyal, and influential image of Angoulême. Therefore, this presentation will examine my arguments for key sites that might have been included in the 1565 Royal Tour of Charles IX and the 1573 entry of Governor Philip de Rivière. A working theory has been created that can coherently argue the key sites that best projected the civil heritage of Angoulême. This can be argued by comparing the places mentioned in the 1575 Belfort map to the streets from 1565, analyzing the Ebel Zone and Jacques de Bocard sources, and cross-referencing the accounts of the 1526 entry of Francois Premier and the 1573 governor's entry of Volvia within the context of this hypothesis. Given this information, it must be stressed that the contents of this section remain speculation and cannot be definitively proven since there is no record of the entry route. The St. Pierre Cathedral served as the most significant landmark of the city and would be an obvious choice to display to Charles IX. The central parish church of the St. Sabard Abbey would have aided in setting the foundation for the image building process. The Jacqueline's Covent and the St. Andre Church would more likely have been included as well. The St. Andre would have more likely been included as the church was located right across the street from the Palais Talfer, and that would also indicate that the Chateau d'Angoulême must have been included in the 1565 entry. The Châtelet would have more than likely been included, along with the Porte du Palais, which was an obvious inclusion in the 1565 entry, as this entrance had been the traditional port of entry for other royal entrances in Angoulême. But as a final note, the civic leadership would have possibly included passing by Jean Calvin House when he was uh, living there in exile in 1535. When combined, I argued that these sites would have had the greatest impact in creating the image of Angoulême as having royal connections, possessing a sacred history, and being a religious coexistent urban space that can be argued belonged in the center of France. The noble Angoulême Huguenot Jacques de Bocart made striking claims in his Horans to Charles IX, and the only one of the surviving sources from the 1565 entry. As the civic leadership had created this image of Angoulême being deeply rooted in the history of the monarchy, and therefore the support of the monarchy, Bocart downplayed this image. He stated that, quote, the public are in the hands of the kings and princes and are divided into two species, one of the weapons, the other of the law. 
those who are ministers under the authority of kings and princes, like their lieutenants, governors of cities and provinces, and magistrates, have the administration of arms, others of laws, to obey them according to the ordinance of their superior, for the public rest, the defense and preservation of the good, and the punishment of the bad, and for this effect the sword was given to them. As for the private defense, it consists of, of the one hand of each, when necessity presses him, and he cannot be rescued from public authority." End quote. As Bukhart noted that the king should reconsider the battle between the two religions, he subliminally suggested that the king should devolve his authority in the provinces to the governors. In following suit with cities such as Lyon, maybe Angoulême could distance itself away from the polit political center of France and more closely align their open space under the authority of their governor instead. The effort of constructing an image of Angoulême as a historical and religious space had failed. Charles IX left Angoulême without the image that the civic leadership had hoped to instill in his mind. This lack of recognition, combined with the further destruction of the city during the Second Religious War in 1568, had completed the identity crisis of the Angoulême leaders. The original account of the Volvi entry, first published in 1573 under the name Tracte Contente d'Entrée et Reception de Haute Poissante, Maison de Philippe de Volvi de Rouffet, follows the same formula that other entry accounts contain. Estienne Maquilin confirms that Volvi began his entry at the Porte de Palais, where he was greeted by bold and brave soldiers and inhabitants of the city. From the Porte de Palais, quote, were also gunshot greetings, and for a long time, continued the shooting of the small guns and pistols of the said youth, and the inhabitants of the said city who were, as well as above, in arms, in good order, and peaceful, well conducted, and governed, placed from the, placed from the said place of the Croix de Châtelet, to be beyond the said great, great Hal de Palais, and in large numbers." End quote. From this account, it appears that the inhabitants of Angoulême sought to welcome their new governor with open arms. He would travel on the Grande Rue, the Rue de Trois Notre Dame, the Rue de Soleil, and others, which had the houses of notable Angoulême leaders lining the streets before reaching the Saint Pierre Cathedral. After leaving the cathedral, Volvi would make his way to the Jacobin's Covent. The route would continue, passing by the Saint Antoine Church, before concluding in, concluding in front of the Chateau de Angoulême. Amid the atmosphere of gunfire, the entry of Philip de Volvi had concluded. Instead of showcasing places that connected Angoulême to the monarchy, this entry projected the image of Angoulême being a civil and religious urban space. The civic leadership highlighted the Catholic religiosity of the city, as Volvier was a known Catholic, and since Angoulême had suffered even more damage in 1568. Since they no longer had the need to appeal to the Edith of Amboise, the coexistent image of the city no longer served as a priority. Due to the apparent neglect of the Valois Angoulême monarchy, the civic leadership shifted their loyalties to the governor. The civic leaders presented Volvier the city with a lavish entry, complete with fanfare and expensive gifts. If this, if this had happened to Charles IX, then these efforts went unnoticed. But with Volvier, the city has successfully created a new image as a Catholic space that had been destroyed by the, the religious wars and needed a strong governor to, protect, to project their urban, urban space. The history, people, sites, and traditions cannot help Angoulême extend the center of France to be part of their urban space. The civic leadership had so desperately tried to remain relevant that creating this image of Angoulême became their identity. But with Charles IX continuing his royal toll, they shifted their loyalty away from the monarchy and became surprisingly loyal to their governor. The civic leadership embraced the Lyon ideology and took advantage of their geographic position to establish their own space in France, the forgotten periphery. Despite their best efforts, Angoulême seemed destined to be forgotten by the monarchy and remain on the periphery. Thank you.